Blessings, everyone. This is Chris Kendall from the rawadvantage.com, registered holistic nutritionist, raw food lifestyle coach, and raw chef. Today, we're blessed to have Dr. Doug Graham back for another installment in the series of I Can't Do 8010 Because. Welcome, Dr. D. How are you doing? I'm doing really good and somehow managing to another day of 801010. You know, it's, I it's working out okay for me. It. It's day by day, isn't it? It's just whew, a miracle. Well, you know. <laughs> There's a, an artist philosopher named Ashley Brilliant. I don't know if you ever saw his work. And he does these like cartoons that are one picture and a saying underneath, but it's it's philosophy more than card more than comedy. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they mix a little. Yeah. Anyway, it was a it was a one of those day by day calendars, a little sheet for each page oh, yes. each day, yeah. right? And the wind was blowing it. And so so half a dozen pages had ripped off and a couple more were about to. Yeah. And and the saying underneath was, I try to take one day at a time, but sometimes five or six days attack me all at once. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> I can so relate. I'm more of a one day at a time guy myself. I'm as, as far as 80, 10, 10, I'm in it for today. I've made the decision today. I'll be 80, 10, 10 raw vegan. Yeah. And and I'll deal with tomorrow tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. I've I I've heard our uh, our mutual friend Tim Van Orden say eat fruit first. I've I've probably heard you say that too, right? But like uh, he'll like make whatever choice he wants, but just eat fruit first to start eat there. Eat fruit first. Yeah. And and so I've made my my commitment to for today. I'll deal with tomorrow tomorrow. Yeah. But I do have ripe bananas ready for tomorrow. Yeah. You know, and and ripe persimmons ready for the day after that. Yeah. And and it's looking good that I'll probably make it through the rest of the year as a low fat raw vegan. There we go. Preparation and uh, having all that in place definitely makes the world a difference. But today we're getting into a hot topic, I tell you, especially with uh, things going on in the world. And I've heard this one before, but I've heard people say that the raw food diet is a diet of privilege or it's too expensive. What do you what do you think of that? Well, I don't think, I don't think that, okay, so there's a couple of parts to that. Yeah. Expensive is a, is a funny adjective yeah. because it, 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 there's lots of things. I mean, it, it can be expensive on your time. It could be, it could be expensive on your health. Yeah. It could be expensive dollars and cents. Mm -hmm. Um it could be expensive in lots of ways, right? Mm -hmm. um, on your social life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so expensive is a, it's, it's very close to expansive though, isn't it? It is. And, yeah, that's true. And uh, so when I first think of expensive, I think of how I eat and why I eat. I, I, I invariably eat for the outcome. Mm -hmm. I eat for the desired outcome. Mm -hmm. I'm not, Yes, I eat food I love. I enjoy my food. Definitely, always, as much as ever, yeah. I enjoy my food. Yeah. But I'm eating now not just to fill myself. Yeah. I'm eating to fuel myself. I'm eating to nourish myself. I'm eating for the pleasure. I'm eating based on activities i might have later in the day uh, i'm eating <clears throat> because it's socially a, a pleasant thing to do with others yeah. um, so there's a lot of reasons why i'm i'm eating besides just i need to fill my face mm -hmm. uh, and when i incorporate those reasons into my adjective expensive yeah and i go well i don't know um ha having not had to spend any money on medical care in the last <laughs> it's been know, a while 43, it's been a while 43 44 years since i spent any money on medical care oh in 1979 yeah i, yeah. I definitely went to a doctor and spent money then uh, to be told everything was okay and it would be and my knee would be fine in a few days, which it wasn't. It was a torn ligament and they uh, missed the diagnosis, but I paid for that. Yeah. Um, 
but since going 80, 10, 10, since going raw, since going low fat, raw vegan, uh, trips to the doctor, you know, just almost never happened. So, so in that, in the concept that I, I invested in my health, yeah. becoming health assured and yeah. then starting to spread that message to other people. So I became a health assurance salesperson. <laughs> um, but, but I can't even imagine. I mean, I, I dropped my health insurance in 1980. Haven't had any since. Yeah. Um, am I crazy? I don't think so, but maybe yeah. other people do. Uh, but if I take the cost of health insurance, which I have no idea what that is, I don't even know. Yeah. Two hundred a month. For, yeah, I'm not even sure either, to be honest. I, I don't know what it is. Two to twenty five hundred a year. You know, um, yeah. I'm sure it could be more, and I'm sure it could be less. But even t even twenty five hundred a year, and it's been forty years, so that's it's a bit of a savings. That's a hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Uh, <laughs> that I didn't spend. Yeah. And didn't need to spend and yeah. don't expect to spend uh, because I'm living a lifestyle that doesn't need me going to the doctor again and again and again, yeah. Yeah. again and again and again and again and again and again. So yeah. um, I think there's been at least some savings when I go, ooh, $100,000 in medical bills that I didn't incur. Yeah. In just in the insurance side of it that I didn't yeah. incur. Okay, well, maybe that's not realistic. Maybe it's just the cost. Maybe it's outright just dollars and cents. Well, I mean, I don't know where you draw the line on diet. I don't have a lot of nasty um, ingestion habits. So I'm not doing drugs, yeah. recreational yeah. or otherwise. I'm not, um, I'm not paying for, for, medically prescribed drugs you know yeah. insulin's expensive oh yeah. Um, yeah i'm not i don't drink alcoholic beverages so yeah. you know that's a lot of bottles of wine which Absolutely. i think are part of your food bill every month i think it's got to be considered it's caloric intake it's got to be come under the heading food wine yeah. and beer and hard liquor uh, cigarettes i don't know if that counts as food but it kind of is in the food budget, isn't it? It See? is. I, I tell you, I, I know for a fact with those things, because previous in my uh, teens, late teens, I smoked and I drank and I went out to, uh, you know, fast food restaurants and I easily spent double, triple and even sometimes quadruple on the weekends of what I spend now. Uh, yeah. So when I start thinking of convenience foods, bottles, boxed, bagged, canned, individually yeah. wrapped slices of <clears throat> things that are reminiscent of slices <laughs> of cheese, but probably aren't even, um, whether that's vegan or not. I mean, it, it's gotten better. I've been told to tell you it's gotten better. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, the, the vegan versions probably have gotten better. Yeah. Um, but, but because I buy most of my food in a box, in bulk right yeah. like in a, a box of bananas a box of oranges a box of dates i don't i don't buy 10 dates in a little tiny package i buy 10 i buy five kilo boxes 11 pound boxes of dates mm -hmm. and uh like i said i i recently scored on persimmon and found boxes of 80 nice uh, 80 in a box right and they were they were 15 pounds a box. So it was just. Yeah, wow. uh, okay, that's better were, than yeah, the... it, came, it came to it somewhere is around 18 cents a persimmon. Yeah. You know, I was like, wow, this is no brainer. Let me buy yeah. these. Yeah. So, uh, and then my market guy, because I buy from one guy primarily. Okay. I go to the grocery store for my lettuce, uh, celery organic apples like i can't get that for my market guy so i go to the grocery store and buy that but but um my guy's looking out for me you know and he tells me what's inexpensive he tells me what's really high quality he tells me what has the best taste this week he's he says i'll order something and go to pick it up 
I usually order two days in advance and, and I go to pick it up and, and he goes, I didn't get you any courgettes this week, Doug, because they were just insanely expensive. There was no point in buying them. I refused. <laughs> and I go, well, thanks. I was planning on, okay, but no, I thanks. I always tell him thanks. And, or, or he said, I found organic oranges this week. I know you only ordered one case of oranges, but I found four cases of organic oranges. Uh, I will put in a side there and say, I have not seen organic oranges in the 20 years I've been living in England. I'm sure they're here somewhere, but I've not seen them. And yeah. all of a sudden he had cases of them. So I bought them all. Yeah. There's no, you know, again, a no brainer for me, but, but because I buy by the case, he not only um, reduces the price, but it makes me a great customer of his. So he again reduces the price and then looks out for me and again, keeps my costs low. So I'm, I am conscious of price. I do consider money when I buy my food. Yeah. Um, I'm not, I'm not in that category of people that, you know, just doesn't even care what the food costs because it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, I've met those people, but I'm not those people. And, and so I do, I am conscious of it, but it's, it's a little difficult for me to compare my, my food costs 15 or 20 years ago to what they are now, because now Francesca's grown up and, and she's a super active athlete and yeah. she eats easily as much as I do, or as much as Rosie does more than Rosie does yeah. and and probably more like as much as I do. Whereas when she was a baby and Rosie was feeding her, um, that <laughs> a easier. it wasn't a food cost. It was a yeah. little different. So you have to go per person. Uh, and, and I might've been able to get in under 10 pounds a week. I'm sorry, 10 pounds a day per week, you know, 70 a week per person. Mm -hmm. Um, 10 or 15 years ago 20 years ago even mm -hmm. mm, just yeah and today some weeks i'm well under yeah. and some weeks i'm a little over but i wouldn't be surprised if overall i'm keeping it pretty darn close to right there yeah um I got to think. I go to the grocery store. I spend forty. I go. I have an order come in. It's about sixty. It's about a hundred. I spend. I'm staying under. I'm staying under uh, ten pounds per day per person. Yeah. Which That's I great. think is pretty low compared to a person who eats even one meal a day in a restaurant. Absolutely. No, for They're sure. Eating one meal a day in a restaurant, they're spending more than ten pounds in a restaurant. Yeah. Like, I mean, you, you can formulate a plan of just rice and beans and say, yeah, you can save some money, mm -hmm. but I almost never meet someone who actually does that, you know, and then it becomes kind of a balance of, well, are you doing this specifically with money as your top priority or is health, is enjoyment, is this or that factored into the equation? Because I once had a month where money was the, was the like only the consideration, only. Yep. right? And, it can happen. And, um, and I had bananas yep. all day. Yeah. And I had carrots and peanuts for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> carrots and raw peanuts. Yeah. And, and, you know, I could, I was eating on $2 a day or something. Yeah. And, uh, and I was begrudging that much. I really just didn't have any money. Yeah. But uh, that was a long time ago. And, yeah. Yeah. And I wouldn't recommend that plan as a long term plan. No. Um, and even the people who are trying to do like rice and beans. I mean, I know people who live on rice and beans yeah. in Central America. There's people who live on rice and beans, Yeah. but they have rice and beans and something mm -hmm. in the morning. Yeah. And they have maybe an egg, you know, yeah. they have rice and beans and something else at lunchtime, either a yeah. piece of fish or a piece of meat or maybe some fruit, something they're spending money on something, yeah. you know, and then they have rice and beans and vegetables in the dinner meal yeah. and um as much as we'd love to say oh i could live on rice and beans you know for pennies a day yeah but you can't yeah, most you really don't. can't yeah. nor yeah. would i recommend it and it yeah. and it's not a sustainable approach and 
And what is sustainable is, is what nature provides to go with the seasons. Yeah. So if you bought pomegranate two months ago, it was available, but expensive as all heck. Yeah. But you buy it next week, buy it around Christmas time. Yeah. And, and pomegranates, they're incredible. And the price is down to the absolute bottom. Yeah. You know, persimmon right now, the, the market's flooded with persimmon. Yeah. The prices are, are low and the quality's high. Yeah. And and every month of the year, you know, I threaten to make this calendar. And don't uh, I, I know you you won't do I'm it. I'm excited to see it. I'm excited. But I, to see I, it. I threaten to make a calendar, you know, what's available every month of the what am I looking forward to next month? What am yeah. I looking forward to next month? And it's a little tricky because in different parts of the world, there's you're looking forward to different things. But yeah. oh my goodness gracious, the the lychee coming out of South Africa right now. Yeah. I, gotta I look have for to that say it's you. some of the best I've ever had. Yeah. Is, I, I, I'm really surprised. The, the lychee coming out of South Africa right now are some of the best I've ever had. And I've picked lychee off the tree, had really good Florida lychee. And that's hard to beat, obviously, yeah. right off the yeah. tree. But these are just spectacular. And they started with a, a variety that's, a fairly common Caribbean variety, mm -hmm. but somehow they did something. They're coming out bigger and sweeter. Mm -hmm. And I think they're just taking really good care mm -hmm. because lychee grow on the island of Mauritius, which is the name of the variety mm -hmm. as well. It's from that island. Lychee do grow there. Uh, I have a hard time imagining on that island that it's an ideal climate for lychee mm -hmm. and i think these guys just put these mauritius seeds onto an ideal environment in south africa mm -hmm. and they're just going yeah and they just went nuts yeah. they just went nuts it's kind of like if it's kind of like the you know we have um deer in the florida keys that are called white-tailed deer yeah yeah. Well, they're the white-tailed deer are all up and down the entire east coast of the North American continent. Yeah. So, but the white-tailed deer in the Florida Keys remain in the Florida Keys. They don't leave. <laughs> I don't blame it's, them. Yeah, I don't blame them either. <laughs> Ex, and there's everything there they could ever need except for much food. Wow. There's really not much food. But there's everything else is wonderful. Yeah, they're like, ah. and I so what happened? Program. <laughs> well, what happened was the white, the smallest white tail deer, yeah, did better than the big ones, yeah, where there wasn't a lot of food, yeah, and over time, they got smaller and smaller and smaller, until now the white tail deer in the Florida Keys look like a different species of deer. Yeah. They're not. Yeah. They're not. They're no. just. They're just very, very, very small, yeah. dainty white-tailed yeah. deer, about the size of a a great a dane, maybe a snooter. Oh, okay, yeah, not that small, but they're full-on deer. Anyway, they're the exact same genetics as the white-tailed deer, you know, up in up in Maine or Vermont or something that are big creatures. Yeah, um, these are little little dainty things, the size of it all, the size of a German Shepherd or a or a wow. little bit bigger than that, but built like deer. They are deer. Yeah. So the same thing happened with these Mauritius, uh, <laughs> with this Mauritius lychee, right? Is that they yeah. they reach their full potential? Yeah. Anyway, they're spectacular flavor, um, really big, juicy, sweet, and and. And crazy and expensive because it's the absolute height of season. They have to move them. And yeah. it's a hard time of year to move fruit. Yeah. Yeah. Fruit isn't the most popular food right now. Especially juicy. <clears throat> a lot of people are, I think, looking for more dense. At least as fruit eaters often are looking for more dense fruit. Exactly. And so, and so I mean, when I talk to my market guy and I go, oh, nah, he goes, nobody's buying fruit. He says, it's just not happening now. It's just, It's amazing how people are thinking other food now as we approach holidays time. Yeah. And, and I'm not, I'm thinking fruit. 
yeah. yeah. And for so some the, people, some people tightening their belts, you know, that may be the first thing that goes for some people. They might not think of it, you know, but well, yeah. I mean, if you're going to buy something that's out of season, if you're going to buy something that comes from a long distance, hence is exotic. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you're going to, if, but if you're buying bananas, I mean, case of bananas is pretty much okay. Case of bananas is more expensive for me today than it used to be for yeah. sure. Yeah. Bit, yeah. For sure, it's up 25% from 20 years ago. Yeah. But the cost of living is up 17% from two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Food has not kept up. Yeah. The cost of food has not kept up. Food is actually still a bargain. Uh, my grocery bill last week, it, it was my grocery bill last week came in well under. Ten dollars per person per day. Yeah, just I know the but week by week, and some weeks it might be just a little over when I'm splurging. Yeah, you know? like yeah. the week that I bought the, all those persimmon, but yeah. now for the You're next three out. or four weeks we're going to be eating those persimmon. Yeah, you know, so uh, I don't. I, I think buying by the can. You don't have to spend more money. You have to, no, exactly. but you want to eat what's in season. I mean. I mean, if you're if you're buying a little bitty clam shell of raspberries for twelve dollars, I mean yeah. that kind of blew your. <laughs> you can definitely blow it. I think if people actually dollar for dollar took what they spend mm -hmm. and compared in reality all the costs of of missing work for a day, what's that cost when you're sick? Yeah, you know if we count if we factor in lost work days yeah uh, lost productivity lost i don't know about you but i'm i'm not usually my most sensitive kind person delight to be around um when i'm not feeling well yeah yeah and i don't know if i started if i started being not nice to you <laughs> what this that would the cost me video series doug <laughs> So, so there's a lot of cost in, in the sense of expense. Yeah. What, you know, if, if we look at the other side of the equation, though, there's also what do you gain? Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, I made a couple of recipes recently that were brown, <laughs> intentionally brown, yeah, right? Like they, gravy they, or they incorporated white raspberries, which are not white, they're brown. Yeah. You know? Uh, by the time they're dehydrated, they incorporated white raspberries. They had cinnamon in it, so it was brown. Yeah. Um, had a, did a couple of fruit recipes that were brown, and intentionally yeah. so. Yeah. But I actually got comments from several people going, "Yuck, brown." Yeah. Yeah. I go, Wait a minute, brown is mean? a color. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. A lot of people eat brown, and brown and gray and beige. I mean. I remember making fun of somebody's plate where everything on their plate was brown. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can imagine making fun of that. <laughs> you know, because it was it was the gravy and it was the whole deal and everything was brown and and it just didn't look appealing. So it's the energy, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's going to come out brown. <laughs> yeah. Oh goodness! So I don't know. Anyway, the cost, if I, you know, I can eat my meal and, and still feel good afterwards, be awake and alert. Uh, uh, I can go out and, and be as active as I want. I'm not going to eat and then go do cardio instantly, obviously, but yeah. that's true for any food. But, but to have this uh, vibrant energy, I mean, that's got to be figure into the equation somewhere you can't i know people have people have attacked 80 10 10 you know and they go well yeah it's good for everything except your tea yeah. you know or, or it's good for everything except your hair or it's good for everything ex and and that hasn't been my experience oh, me uh, but i hear people saying it right and they want to attack one thing and they go okay well i could do 80 10 10 except it's bad for my finances and and I'm not seeing that. To be honest, I would love to to have somebody 
do the math as the expression goes, you know, I'd love to have yeah. somebody actually do the math and show me where they spent so much money. Cause I'm going to, I'm going to say, I mean, what's expensive, uh, Organic lettuce is a bit expensive, but how much organic lettuce do most people eat? Yeah. Yeah. Or of any kind of lettuce, you know, how much lettuce do you eat? Or I don't know. I'm not, I'm not seeing huge costs in food. I can figure out how to spend a lot of money on food. Yeah. But I'd be going against nature. I wouldn't be buying what was best. Yeah. When I, yeah. you know, I go into the market and, and they're. It's like the sun is shining on it sometimes, right? It's just like, you can tell, you can smell it. It's like that, that fruit display is bulging over. And when you get close to it, it's like, you know, that's what's, what's ready. You know, last week, my, my market guy was selling berries, almost giving them away. Yeah. He had he had strawberries almost giving them away. He had blueberries almost giving them away. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't believe what he was asking. Um, it wasn't a tenth of what they're getting in the grocery store. Yeah. It, it was so inexpensive. I go, how come? And he says, Well, people aren't buying a lot of fruit, and the big guys still have to sell their fruit and they need it to move. And so they knock the prices way down and yeah. I bought it cheap and I want to sell, I want to sell it. I don't want to be stuck with it. Yeah. So I marked it as low as I can possibly mark it mm -hmm. and let's move it on. Yeah. So, I mean, I came home with so many berries, yeah. so yeah. many berries. A good problem. <sighs> yeah. Good problem to have. Right. Yeah. You, uh, There's always something that's a bargain at the market, though. Yeah. Uh, maybe not in your grocery store. So maybe this is a story about where do you buy your food and how do you buy it? Do you buy it from a distributor? Yeah. Do you buy it from a wholesaler? Do you buy it from a retailer? Yeah. If you're buying from a retailer, it's the, the most expensive way you can buy your food other than just go to a restaurant and have somebody else make it for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is way more cheese. Yeah. Yeah. If you're buying I, I know people who they had to seek out a distributor and they make a weekly or bi-weekly trip to the next city which isn't that far and and they buy but a lot of times you can find it in your area too I, I do the same I mean my local guy is a good 45 minutes to an hour from me yeah well worth the price of the petrol to go there right I mean it's just yeah. like I could spend twice as much in the grocery store for the same food and it would be lower quality. Yeah. Yeah. So instead, I, and it cost me 10 pounds to drive up there in petrol. So, okay. So I pay the 10 pounds in petrol to drive up there and back, yeah. but I save 90 pounds in food bill. Yeah. Well worth the effort. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, I, it's a great, it's a great excuse. Mm -hmm. It just costs too much. Yeah. Um, because people say, well, you know, I bought all that produce, but then it all went bad. Yeah. Yeah. And I go, really, that wasn't the, that wasn't the produce's fault. That yeah. probably was, that was probably your skills at managing food. And so we teach food management. And when I teach people how to manage food, we usually start out with one food or two foods in the house and, and then learn how to juggle three and four and five. Because like I say, I bought 300 persimmon. You know, I'm checking them pretty often. Yeah. Yeah. You get good at this motion, just checking every single persimmon. I'm, yeah, I'm quick. But <laughs> I check them all because oddly enough, some days only one will be right. But you want to find that one. Yeah. And other days, all you eat is persimmon that day. Absolutely. Those are good <laughs> days. I'm not complaining. Yeah. yeah. I'm not complaining. We stay on top of it. Everybody's asking. Like, there's all these persimmon in the corner, right? And Francesca's going... Is there any ripe persimmon today? Is there persimmon? <laughs> Not today. If Those are just sorry. ornaments, darling. Yeah, right now they're just Christmas ornaments. Yeah, yeah. Hang them from the tree until they come ripe. Yeah, yeah. So, so food management definitely comes into the play because if you're throwing away a lot of what you're buying, yeah, you're doing something wrong because yeah. um, 
and yeah, when I buy by the case, if I buy 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 a case of oranges, there's a good chance there's going to be one bad one in the bunch. Yeah, it's I think okay. they do that on right? purpose. They throw a couple of the bad ones in there just to I get think rid they of them. Do. <laughs> I think they do. Who knows what they do? But they they uh, you know they get paid by the full box. So yeah. But, you know, if you lose one or two, I can understand. But if you lose a whole box of oranges, you did yeah. something wrong. Yeah. And that's not, that shouldn't figure into the, what's the cost of your food. Yeah. I'm not seeing it. By the time I include my health, by the, the, the sheer joy of eating such delicious, vibrant food. Yeah. Um, that's worth something. Huge, man. I, I, I tell you, like, I... I've traveled a ton. I know you've traveled even more than I have. And in all the cities and countries and continents I've been, generally speaking, five to 20 bucks a day on the high, high end. But usually five to $15 a day is what I spend, which is much cheaper than I used to spend on other diets. And I, I totally agree. Like you, you can make it more expensive if you're just buying bags of superfoods and you're buying berries out of season and you're going to Whole Foods. But it, it's all learning curve, all the stuff we're talking about. You know, if you uh, put attention and time into learning that craft to pick out good food for lower prices and get the bulk, you can make it as cheap, cheaper or cheaper than almost any other diet I can see out there. So, uh, again, I stress making the relationship with the people you buy your food from. Yeah. Because, you know, if you're just buying, if you're just going to the grocery store and you're anonymously throwing food in your cart, and you're mm -hmm. buying some boxes of this and some cans of that and some bottles of this. And then you check out and nobody knows you. Um, nobody's looking out for you at that end. But but my produce guy is looking out for me. Yeah. So if he sees something that he knows I like, he'll buy it, even though I didn't put it on my list. Yeah. If he sees something that it's on my list and I tell him, you know, it's not important, but if it's if it's good, let's get it. And and you go, no, it wasn't really that good, but I'll keep watching next week. Yeah. Uh, so that's a that's a cost that I don't even know how to factor in because that's an asset. That's a huge oh. asset. What, what's it worth to you? Um, this summer, I talked to a guy who had a new experience. And his new experience was that when he was at the wholesale market, uh, the guy who was helping him shop at the wholesale market was tasting food in its unripe state. I know I've talked about this yeah. before. Yeah, but, yeah. But he was tasting food in, in its unripe state. And... And at first I freaked out about that. And then I really listened to the rest of the story, which was he's gotten to where he can tell you what's going to be great when it ripens. Yeah. And, and at the time I thought, wow, this is, this is a skill that I don't need to have. <laughs> yeah. no, nor do I want. Yeah. But, but I do appreciate. Huge. Yeah. Then I went to the market and my guy is trying to guide me towards persimmon. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, but they're rock hard. I don't even know if these are any good. Yeah. And, and he instantly pulled out his knife and cut a sliver and gave me a slice of persimmon. So try this. I go, but it's rock hard. He goes, yeah, but see how much flavor it already has. Yeah. If it has the flavor... When it ripens, it will have the sweetness. Yeah. But you want to go along with that sweetness. You want the flavor. And yeah. that you can already test now. So now I've begun the learning process. That's wild. Of being able to assess unripe fruit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, our, our, our uh, ancestors are closest living relatives. They very likely do that, right? They have uh, absolutely enzymes and they're eating it when it's unripe and then they're probably going crazy when it's ripe. And then when it's overripe, they're going even more crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Getting drunk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you just, I mean, if you're a bargain hunter. I am. Oh yeah. And, and I've, I've bought a few bargains on occasion, yeah. you know, but if you're a bargain hunter, 
nobody's giving you bargains on on bottles, box, bag, canned, all that stuff no, that's in no. the grocery store. But yeah. there's always bargains on produce. Yeah. There's always bargains. And if your guy knows you, and he people calls me. Your fr- then, then he's going <laughs> to say, look, I've got, I mean, I, I still remember when Robert from Robert is here said, hey, Doug, you want some peaches? And I go, no, nah, Robert, I'm like full up. I'm full. Of, I don't really need peaches. He goes, I got four cases of peaches. I'm give them to you. I can have some peaches then. <laughs> he goes, they're so ripe. I can't sell them. Yeah. I go, okay, I'll take. So I brought home four, four cases of peaches. Yeah. He said, but you need to deal with them today. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. he wasn't kidding. And out of those four cases of peaches, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if I threw away a case and a half of peaches yep. yep, and the rest all got either eaten right then and there yep. or frozen yeah because they weren't going to wait until dinner time even i mean they were right now peaches but it was two and a half cases of peaches for free yeah you can't beat that man That's- i've had lots of people give me a case of bananas for free because they yep. ripened up and they go okay here just take these and I get that all the time, especially now that I'm buying from the same guy again and again and again. And he knows, he knows I'm good mm-hmm. for 140, 150 pounds of produce in cost to go. for people. <laughs> we use British pounds, you yeah. know, so, so if I'm going 150 pounds a week, yeah. um, multiply that times 50, you got 7,500 pounds. That's a pretty, you know, that's $10,000. Yeah. yeah. Um, a year. Yeah. You're good. And he knows I'm going to do that year in, year out for the next 20 years. And and he goes, wow, you know, like this is. He's paying his food bills. Yeah. I'm going to give him almost a million pounds in food costs or some crazy thing. Yeah. And uh, it's well worth it to him. Yeah. Well worth it to him to occasionally give me a, a deal. Yeah. Grocery store will never give you a deal. So know the people you're buying from, develop those relationships, Yeah. purchase in bulk, purchase what's in season. Um, you'll not only get the best food, you'll get the best prices. Yeah. Learn to manage your food at home. Yeah. I'm not seeing 801010 as any more expensive. I'm seeing it as less expensive in the overall costs in terms of health and productivity and vibrance uh, and enjoyment. And any other ratio you want to use, environmental impact. Yeah. You know, I mean, Way better. We're eating fruit, like, like the old saying goes, it grows on trees. Yeah. What yeah. else does tree what else do trees do, right? It's like, oh, air, oh, topsoil, oh, environment for animals. Oh. <laughs> grows on trees. So for me, yeah. those are those are reasons why it's less expensive, yeah. if anything, certainly yeah. not more expensive. And um, and I'm happy with that. Me too, man. Amen, brother. I, I I agree. I hope this uh hits a lot of people and helps them to find those ways. Because like you said, you you can make it more expensive if you're just going to the the superfoods and you know buying the most expensive thing out of season. But you don't have to do that. And with these skills and this information and some time, you can make it inexpensive and incredibly health promoting. Chris, let's deal with another one next time. All right. I'm down for it. Well, always, as always, thank you so much, Dr. Graham. Where can everyone find you? Oh, come to Food and Sport. They can find me at Food and Sport, 10 letters. The word food, the letter N, the word sport.com. I'm there at foodandsport.com. Run a form. You can ask your questions there for free. We've got a huge Q&A. It's the largest on the web for raw food Q&A. Uh, come and see me at Food and Sport. Ask your questions on the forum. I'll be in Costa Rica running my feasting and fasting and fitness event uh, from when? From January 21st until March 4th. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll get this one out that, first then. Well, that event's pretty filled up, to be quite it- fair. That, that event has filled. I, yeah. I keep it small intentionally. It will be small. It'll be personal. Everybody will get the attention that they desire there. Um, and hopefully reach all of their health goals as a result. I mean, six weeks, it's a good investment. 
Uh, we're talking about having a seventh week, maybe like oh. a lifestyle celebration for a seventh week. Yeah. Uh, that is yet to be determined. Should have okay. something out on that within a week or so. Okay, so that'll be up on your site and or social media. Be mentioning it if that happens. Yeah, sounds good. So I'll, I'll get sure, this one man. out sooner. We're gonna have you come, aren't you? Gonna come with my only six weeks. Unfortunately, I don't know if I'll be able to, but I'd love to. Just one week. Just one week. It's true. It's true. Me, I'd like to. I'd love to make that happen. I'd love to make it happen. <laughs> but love to uh, see you. Me too, man. Me too. Uh, but also, if anyone hasn't read the AD 1010 Diet, or if you have, I recommend you check it out, read it again, read it for the first time. It'll make a world of difference in your raw food journey and make things a heck of a lot easier. Be able to explain stuff, and it's just a, an amazing starting point or end point to really sharpen your, your tools, right? So, always appreciate you, brother. I hope Bless you have heart, an Chris. awesome Great to day. see you. you Great too, man. to see you, and I hope you get another good night's sleep tonight. Yeah, I need I need one. A little jet lag, <laughs> but uh but all in its place. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Go to health. See you guys. Providing clarity on 801010 with Dr. Douglas Graham. Ooh, don't forget to check out my raw recipes playlist in the top left, the video just for you in the top right. Subscribe for more videos in the bottom right, and get your three free ebooks in the bottom left. Grab your free raw recipe app, available on iPhone and Android with over 100 free raw recipes, common fruit and vegetable calorie breakdown, frickin' raw some food combined chart, shopping cart function, and so much more.